In case you didn't know, May is Stroke Awareness Month. And joining us this morning to talk about something that affects more than 2.7 million Americans is Dr. David Rose, who is the Assistant Director in the Department of Neurology at USF right here in Tampa. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, how are you? Good, good. So it feels a little strange to be talking with you knowing that you're right across the street, but that's all right. This is uh, certainly so important to talk about. We're talking about AFib uh, this morning. I have a grandmother that has AFib. Tell people what this is and why this is such a concern that we really need to be on top of, especially when you are talking about strokes and heart attacks. Sure, it's my pleasure. So I am a neurologist. I'm a stroke doctor, a strokeologist, if you will. All I do all day, every day over at Tampa General is see stroke patients. And one of the leading causes of stroke is a heart condition called atrial fibrillation, which is what your grandma has. And what that is, is, is an irregular heartbeat, an electrical problem in the heart, basically, whereby a clot can form inside one of the chambers of the heart and over time potentially flick off and go to the brain and cause a stroke. And then you'd be one of my patients if you had that. And what happens is that clot from the heart lodges in one of the arteries in the brain, one of the pipes, if you will, clogs up that pipe and causes a starvation of some brain tissue from oxygen and the nutrients that it needs and causes a stroke, which can be signs and symptoms of slurred speech or facial droop or arm weakness or numbness and so forth. So I mentioned my grandmother has this. Do we need to be um, particularly paying more attention to this? If we know family members have AFib, talk about is there kind of, you know, when it comes to the actual AFib, what are the dangers that we need to know? AFib is uh, a big risk factor for stroke, five times uh, risk of stroke versus the general population. So one of the things that we recommend for AFib patients is an anticoagulant, which is a strong blood thinner. Uh, the old-timey drug warfarin or cumin you may have heard of is a blood thinner. There's some new agents on the market such as Pradaxa, which is a, a blood thinner as well. And what these agents do is they thin the blood just enough so that these clots don't form inside the heart and then flick off and cause a stroke by clogging up one of the arteries in the brain. So if someone knows they have AFib or if they don't know and they have symptoms of AFib, get the diagnosis with your doctor with a simple EKG test of the heart and then consider one of these agents of uh, anticoagulant medication to prevent a stroke from happening. Well, and I was just going to ask, what are the symptoms of AFib? Is this something we get at a young age? Can we get this when we're older? How do we know, you know, when we may be at risk? So anyone can get AFib. It, it tends to affect elderly more than younger folks, but let's say you have the, the DNA, the genes from your parents or grandparents, and you can get it at any age, uh, but usually it's in the 70s, 80s, and so forth. Uh, but certainly we have patients as, you know, as young as in their 20s and 30s who have it. And the symptoms basically include palpitations of your heart, like it's racing very fast, uh, like you uh, have butterflies in your chest, um, and not when you're just exercising or giving an interview like that, like, like what I'm doing right now, and I'm anxious, I got, you know, butterflies. But no, it's really when you're just sitting around doing nothing, and all of a sudden you get this attack of racing heart, um, or feeling you're, like you're about to pass out, or getting lightheaded and dizzy, those could all be signs of AFib. But I should mention that a good 50% of patients with AFib may have no symptoms whatsoever. So that's why it's important to see your doctor on an annual basis, consider getting one of these EKG tests. It's simple, it's easy, just to see if you have an irregular heartbeat so that you can be on the right blood thinning medication to prevent a stroke and being one of my patients over at the ICU at yeah. Tampa General. Well, good to know, doctor. Thank you so much. Is there a website you want to send us to if anyone has more questions? Absolutely. I always recommend the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association websites, aha.org, O-R-G. They have tons of great information about stroke risk, atrial fibrillation, hypertension, um, cholesterol, okay. diabetes, quitting smoking, etc. All these risk factors that you can help get under control to prevent a stroke. All right, doctor. Thank you so much. Hopefully next time we'll see you in studio. That's right. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for having me.